All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. As you can see, our next game is upon us here. And as uh, we were talking about before the break, this is actually a pretty big deal. We got uh, Wheels coming off that victory, uh, currently sitting, I want to say, at a 5-3 and three record as a result of that. DC at 4-3 uh, and three going into this matchup here. So both of these teams contesting to try to stay alive. And, uh, you know, you didn't think you'd be saying that maybe against about DC, if anything. Well, Wheels been playing pretty solid. I'm not lie. I didn't pick them to admit to. No, it's not. really. I mean, I I, I love these guys, but uh, I, it it doesn't feel like they've really like put it together. Yeah, it's well. Obviously, they're also switching things up a little bit too. Uh, post uh, post Kiev right there, uh, swapping out Demon for who did they swap out for? It was they Brett, swapped out. Right? No, they swapped no. out Demon and then. Yeah. Boba went to the four position, and then they brought in four of the. That's three. what it was. Okay, so this is kind of that that newer roster now, and obviously even most recently uh, we we're kind of joking about that before. But uh, Abed hitting 10k MMR, whatever you think about it, very good player. Um, but maybe that does overhype this team a little bit as a result of that. So, to to an extent, yeah. Um, excuse me, <laughs> I'm I'm really sick right now. By the way, uh, if you can't hear it. Um, Wait, Somebody in this it. office gave me the damn plague. Oh, boy. Who do we think it is? All right, we won't talk about that, but... Anyway, so we got DC here, though, but... And I think the other the other biggest thing, too, is... The brand got second place at TI last year. This yes. is not that same team, though, obviously. This is a completely different team, so... I, I think a, a mixture of all this almost maybe puts a little bit too much expectations on this team. Uh, yeah, yeah, we see we're, we're chiming into the. <laughs> I'm sorry, right we're here. watching yeah, MP Odd right now. <laughs> <laughs> MP Planet Odd is happening. There's is a TV in here with the game that's happening as well, and so. it is freaking crazy. It's, I am sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. We got Wheel Wreck <laughs> while whistling versus Digital. We're totally chaos. gonna pay attention to this game and nothing else. We swear. <laughs> uh, but no, that's a very significant <laughs> match. So I, I, it, I think that's understandable. Anyways, point is, I feel like it's the same way with, like, Alliance even, where, you know, people maybe expect too much of them because of their history with the brand, but they're completely different teams. I think people, like, have expect a lot of things out of their players. You got Abed, Forev, Mason, um, you know, Dubu also finished top six at TI. Yeah. Um, Bulba's a top-tier coach. You know, people like to joke about him or whatever, uh, about, you know... How he's never gonna, he's never really achieved anything successful past his TR3 run. Um, so you know he's got a chip on his shoulder, but uh, you know all of these guys like they have some amount of pedigree to them. Yeah. And individually, there's there's a lot of skill there. It's it's just a question of you know how do you put it together? Like this is like the the sort of age-old problem for almost all Dota teams, right? You got a lot of individual skill. Now, how do you make it mesh? And uh, that's that's difficult. <sighs> We've even seen that in these qualifiers. What was it? Crescendo, I want to say. This team that of the European region, you know, you're looking at freaking Ake, EGM, Cinderin. These are some big-ass names in the scene. They went, I think they got two wins <laughs> in group stages. So yeah, I mean, they also are some older names that's in the true. scene. That's uh, true. Have fallen off somewhat, yeah. but these guys, you know, first 10k, uh, four of Dubu, just you know, you know, is is pretty got recently. A, got a bright that, future, yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty recently that they got their hot star. Like Mason M God, like he's been performing <laughs> really well. Yeah, it's just like you got to make sure that the draft lines up for these guys. Like I, I feel like this patch right now is is pretty formulaic. You get a one of Clockwork, Sand King, Night Stalker. Yeah. And uh, a self-sustaining one position, a you know your your mid, your mid hero pool is is only so large as well, and then you get some off laner that like does shit. That that's it. That's, that's, that's all you need. That, that's the that's rest this patch right now. Yeah. Um. And instead, you know, okay, so we haven't talked about the draft that much. <laughs> now that the draft is almost finished, I guess we could probably look at that. Um, but Will we team. have like uh, we have Rubik Oracle out of Digital Chaos, yeah. and I like Rubik. I'm why Oracle? <laughs> yeah, I think you're with everyone else there. Frankly, we we've seen we've seen him a couple times. Also, again, covering the SRE region over these last couple of days too. And 
the hero continues to be on paper. He sounds actually pretty good in execution, though. It doesn't really come through. And has been brought I think Draskal even made the point, he's actually one of the more technically difficult five position supports to play. Yeah, it's I so this is probably the the Bulba Rubik Dubu Oracle. Um and Rubik can roam around and do stuff on the map. Um and I, I, I sort of get the get why they went that route this game, just because they have Drow Aura. And it sort of enables all these range heroes that they have right now. Yeah. So they're going for... But at the same time, for their last pick, with Drow Strats, you need something to sort of front line. Um, start a fight, do something. Uh, they have that with the Puck right now, but... Bristol is still on the board. It is. It is. Yeah. But I, I, I do like multiple forms of initiation. Bristol, I guess you can just run in there, and it's good. Um, it could be their offlaner. Tidehunter, another one that uh, we haven't seen a lot, but you want that beefy presence that can just get in there and start things off. Obviously, he can do that well, so maybe another one that comes to mind. That's they go not that. <laughs> okay, this is... Puck offlane, then? No, this is no. a this is a mid puck. They might aggro, tr or they might like uh, huh. send two two heroes top. Weaver, though, this is uh, interesting. very interesting. There's not like a. They pretty much have warlock alt, and that's that's wheels team fight. So if there's like not a huge amount of control right now. So if maybe DC's idea is to sort of spread them out with Weaver Puck, but uh, you know, yeah. I, I, like so far the only the only thing I really see here that DC has is you know they got five range heroes with Draw Aura. Yep. Like that's their. Uh, that's almost overkill. That's their, though, th like. that's their strategy right yeah. now. Uh, it also like it doesn't feel good for them to like. I also feel like like if they go five mana tower. And they're not super far ahead. Yeah, who's gonna be up there? They it, it's scary pushing into potentially like Clockwork Hook into Warlock, Batrider, Lasso, somebody. Yeah. I guess they get the Oracle to counter the Batrider, but um, the thing I like about Wheels lineup is that they have multiple ways of initiation between the Clockwork, the Batrider, and the Storm. Yep. And like this is what has been winning games in this meta right now. I, I agree with you, and I, you know, it's almost like a, just seeing the lineup of, of Digital Chaos, like you say, on paper with the with the synergy of the Drought, that final pick, it almost seems like that they were really set on that idea, like, well, we need to get somebody that also has that synergy with the Drought, and they already had a puck, you know, to take care of that. You don't need to overkill it. They might have done that to an sure, extent. Yeah, I, I would have liked, like, a Void or a Tide, uh, you know. Yeah. Anything to offer that that team fight? Um, I mean, I think DC is probably the better team, so draft might not matter that much. They True. might just be able to play this out. I don't think it's such a huge outdraft that DC can't win. Well, I do look at Wheels lineup and definitely feel a little more comfortable uh, with it at the points that you've given. And Phantom Assassin's kind of an interesting pick as well. Not uh, not your everyday one position hero, but. I'm um, also looking at the Oracle, though. The idea of Fate's Edict being a disarm against Phantom Assassin could could be interesting. Uh, use of it. Obviously, the Fate's Edict defensively is a pretty good tool as well. Things like with the Bat Rider and obviously Warlock being out, the Fatal Bond spreading out. So, so Oracle's going to need to be on top of you know using that ability wisely. And that kind of goes back to the idea that Oracle is a difficult technical hero to play. Um, not that Dubu can't do it by any means, but... I'm uh, going to be looking out for that in these fights here. You know what would have been cool to see? Uh, you send the Dro top, and you give the Weaver the 1v1 versus the Batrider. Okay. Because Weaver Weaver does well in that lane. And then you can use the you can use the Dro plus maybe one or two other heroes to really pressure the PA. The PA is like a pretty garbage hero in the early state. <laughs> yeah. That dagger spam can be a little annoying, but... Didn't they even increase the mana cost on that recent patches? So something like that. But point is, yeah, it's fairly weak overall. But th they do choose to go the Weaver in that offlane, sure enough. So for Rev, we'll see how he's able to fight against that. Clockwork? Is he going to do a Courier Snipe? He's trying. Mason? Yeah. That's not Mason. What am I saying? That's Matt. Oh, he, <laughs> oh he can't block it. 
He missed. Yeah. And I guess the, the other, I guess, uh, um, something that we didn't really talk about is Rubik is actually pretty decent against Clockwork in the, in the early game. True. If you get cogged or something, you can always lift him out. That is very true. So and you look at the Clockwork right here. He's also playing mind games with the Courier. Whoever is controlling it. But eventually it's going to be sent back, and he doesn't want to spend too much time trying to make a play on it. Fortune's end bottom lane. Activates on the Bat Rider and can allow or Oracle to kind of poke in there. Put some damage out onto the Bat Rider. You know, this is really nice for Forev right now. He gets a 1v1 against the PA, and he has Drow Aura. Yeah, that's that seems a little odd of a decision here by the Dire Side to not... Well, what was Warlock doing? I mean, he, he has to babysit the Storm a little while Clockwork's going for the Courier Snipe. Okay. If you leave Storm early by himself, it, it feels awful. Storm's, like... Also a pretty garbage hero in lane yeah. against most mid matchups now. Like, really easy to bully. Okay. Well, right now, 9-1 Puck versus a 7-0 Storm Spirit, obviously, and there's that support to keep in mind. Rubik's been here really from the beginning. And Warlock was there, is now at the top lane. And so Weaver, it's level 2, though, allows him, obviously, get the Shikuchi to go with that Gemini attack. A little more harassment himself, ideally get some last hits in there. Yeah. To be fair, Weaver is also a pretty crappy hero level one. Yeah. So it's and you have a PA with uh, poor man shield, so you know it's okay. You can leave him alone for you know a couple of minutes. Bottom lane, Drow Ranger, of course having essentially free farm down here. Oracle's doing a good job of zoning out the Bat Rider. It feels like he's only three and zero currently. He does have boots though. Firefly's going to be coming up in a couple of seconds, but is this kind of expected? Bat Rider is going to struggle when it comes to CS, but I guess levels he's going to do all right. Uh, yeah, just because um, he is getting zoned out by the Oracle. I think w right now, oh, we have uh, Mad trying to move on the on the puck right now, but this is not an easy kill. Oh, meanwhile, first blood goes out at uh, that was the bottom lane, no, the top lane. I want to say, and they also kill Clockwork, as that's a solo kill from Abed right there, and. A lot of that had to do with Clockwork. He actually put the cogs out on the wrong puck. He went to trap the real puck, and he went for the illusion instead. You know, I don't even think that matters. No. Uh, I, I don't fair. think there's anything he can really do to that to that lane. Like, he's got the big problem right now is that he has level one cogs, uh, and I guess he can do that and burn his mana, and that's very cute. But like his, the big part about Clockwork that's scary is that. He starts off with boots first, and he has, and if he has battery assault, he can just run at your supports with battery assault yeah. and kill you at level one. And that's what he should be doing to this Oracle right now in conjunction with the Bat Rider. But, and you know, that's what makes him scary. But he doesn't have that right now. He's he, he's got cogs, so Dubu is not scared at all. He realizes, hey, this Clockworks, oh, just hits he level just hit two, two. Yeah. but you know. He can do whatever he wants right now. He's, he doesn't have to be scared of this guy. There's that mana burn that we're talking about, and Abed's like, well, whatever. It's not the biggest deal. We'll pop a Clarity, actually. Clarity wins games from what I've heard. Especially in the backpacks there. Weaver. Top lane. He's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Phantom Assassin and a Warlock, and then eventually Sakuchi. He's the one with his own sentry down, so they can't see him currently. When he activates that ability. And speaking of Clockwork, back down here. It looks like Fortune's end initially roots him. The Zap. From Bulba, not going to be enough, though. And another Fortune Zen's coming in three seconds. He also does have that Bulba's Purifying Flames, back. but yeah, a little too far back and wouldn't have enough mana to combo anyways. And now Clockworks is. missed his window now. Both of the supports have boots. He's under leveled, just level two. Both the other two supports are uh, level three. Yeah. Bulba's even got a win lace now, so his early impact is... It's it's going to be hard for him. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to figure out what he can really do here effectively. And, well, middle lane, it's kind of part of it. Lifts up the Storm Spirit. Of course, not level 6 yet, so doesn't have that extra mobility. The Fortune's end perfectly timed, and Abed credit for the last hit. I, that was honestly just execution at its finest there. Yeah, there's a nice smoke up by Bulba. Um, moves around, realizes, hey, there, there's nothing to stop this right now. And Storm, th he needs to kill the Storm because they... Wheel has committed a lot of resources into protecting his lane. Warlock started out there. Clockwork went went over and tried to. Um, oh, got 
Mason getting gone on, but he's just going to TP out. But yeah, Clockwork tr went over there and tried to burn some of Puck's mana. So there's a lot of resources invested in mid. And if you can kill Storm at his most vulnerable state, despite those resources being committed to him, that's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, that's that level 5 especially. Again, he still is level 5. Fortune Zen hits actually both Clockworks to Cogsdale. Going to make sure that he stays alive on an Eye Annihilate there and will help do so at least. But the pressure is clearly going to be kept up. And Storm Spirit having trouble getting that level 6 mark. Puck is also still only level 5, though. That's probably what it saw that Dream Quail come out and secure that kill. And just going to pop this shrine as that just spawned here recently. And we'll heal on up, but again, Rubik sitting in the area. Bulba continued to be in that nuisance. And Storm Spirit's descending to jungle for the time being, trying to get his ball lighting before he probably goes back to the middle lane. So he won't be as vulnerable anymore. Would be a good idea. Bottom lane though, Tarao. Power Tread's already finished, has the full magic wand here. Looking good. What item build on a Tarao should we expect to see here, you think? Uh, you know, it's your usual tanky stuff where, okay. Yeah, I caught that. That was a Dream Call commitment. Uh, finds a solo Clockwork there though. Yeah, Clockwork now, like, this is what Storm needs to do, is just go sick, uh, go to the jungle and get his levels, because Clockwork needs those levels even more now. He's a roaming clockwork that hasn't gotten anything done on the map. In fact, he's fed two kills. But uh, back to your question, you know, Drow just gets the normal tanky stuff. Uh, Dragon Lance into uh, Hurricane Pike. Okay. Uh, probably a BKB later. Maybe, perhaps a Manta as well. Is Silver Edge get... actually potentially good this game against yes. the Mana Assassin? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's also an option. But, you know, mostly just your tank up, get a bunch of stat items. Well, off that idea, too, and I know this item has kind of died out. Now, granted, we actually saw it last game, sure enough. Helm of the Dominator, is that anything that you could put? Because especially if they're going to be pushing with the strat, you know, getting the Alpha Wolf, is that a valid? Or is just Helm of the Dominator not good enough anymore? for? It's core? really not that good anymore. Typically, you get it if you want to do stacks or if there's, like, a, a, a wolf. You know, you want a, a creep that's particularly value, but, you know, the buildup is just not as good as it was when it was, like, super broken anymore. Yeah. yeah probably not going to see it, but, yeah, that uh, I really just died off ever since uh, the final nerf to it uh, several patches ago. One was the hottest item when 7.0 first came out, though, that's Dude, sure. when that item first came out, yeah. it was so good. Everyone bought it, and everyone would just have a bunch of neutral yeah. creeps running around, throwing lightnings at you and Seder Blasts. You just saw, like, two or three a game on each side. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Oh, derp, derp, you are dead. Yeah, he is. And Warlock gets picked off. I, I saw them up there. I went away for a second, thinking, like, maybe I have some time. No, they did not. Meanwhile, Puck's trying to find a solo kill, and he'll get it. Abba gets out as well. Clockwork could not do anything about it at that point. Batfighter falls, though. You know what makes Oracle especially good this game? What's that? And, and more viable? Yes, it counters the Batrider to an extent, but they can get away with it because Warlock is an even shittier roaming <laughs> hero. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, he's all about getting that level 6, of course. The chaotic offering right there, but it's not the case, and he's staying away from upheaval too. Warlocks are, are interesting, I feel like, as far as their builds go. We'll see some, some Warlocks even max out upheaval from the beginning. Others, in this case, you know, go, just stay away from it. Just going Fatal Bonds into Shadow Word. Yeah, I mean, he's against yeah. a Weaver and a Puck. Who do not care about upheaval, so it's sort of whatever. Kind of reacting to the game right here. Batrider, top lane. Lasso is not leveled up, though. He is level 7, but doesn't, uh, or hasn't put the point into it just yet. But look at this Puck here. Villa Discord already finished. On to Abed, and he obviously already has <coughs> four kills to work with that, too. Yeah. Ricky, I would like you to click on the Warlock right okay. now. Okay. Clarity. In a minor, an Iron Branch here. Yeah, it's not the most far. I mean, Abed ninjas the tower and gets away against three heroes in a creep wave. Yeah, this Love is it. a Warlock that feels like he has no place in the game. He cannot do anything again. Oh, we got Storm getting gone on. He's on stuff, but not long enough. He's got a Gust, yeah. Or the uh, full ending, that is. So yeah. he's good. But yeah, Warlock, it, really just get him level 6, right? Like, you just need to somehow maybe even farm with him. Just get him 6. Yeah, he's <laughs> just going to do these stacks, or he's going to stack all these camps, hope Storm, you know, takes them, and then just sap the EXP with him. And see, Clockwork actually just bought the Tome. I was going to but you give that to Warlock, right? Like, well, Clockwork also needs levels because uh, at this yeah. point, until Batrider gets a, a blink or those drums, Clockwork is your ideal initiator. 
I guess. Man, Chaotic Offering's so good, but yeah, these earlier on ganks, getting that hook shot, which actually he does get level six from it, so we'll see what plays he can make with it. Yeah, it's it's just like these little things that snowball the game out of control for you. Clockwork skills cogs to get the early courier kill. Doesn't get it. Yeah. Now he's got cogs. <laughs> um and uh and and he doesn't move bottom, can't really pressure Dubu. Uh, it's just like all these little things. Top lane, little things happening up here. Phantom Assassin dealing with the stream call. He basically just goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Abed, figuring he might as well get some damage out of. There was no way he was getting away from it anyway. So this uh, Abed here, he's definitely living up to his name recently as being a very active and good mid player. And Blink Dagger is just about on the way here too. 1730 gold saved up. It, it, they're they're going to have no ways to deal with this. Oh, that's a hookshot miss, by the way. Honestly... That was probably a miss for the better. Because <laughs> he was doing that into a puck as well as a draw nearby. Yeah. Was, uh, he, he, he feels like he's got to do something right now. And and now Forev's like, he, he he has like a fair amount. Look at him. He's just pressuring this Weaver. Or yeah. He's pressuring the PA right now. Despite being, you know, an off lane Weaver. And again, that comes back to the fact that Derp Derp had to sit mid and help the Storm because... Um, Clockwork was going for the courier snipe and didn't have battery assault. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all those things coming, like, stemming from that one failed attempt mid. Yeah, no, that's very true. The whole snowball effect is definitely kind of kicking in right here. As far as a negative way, unfortunately, it's going it's going uphill, I guess, or something. I don't know. Anyways, you get the point. Phantom Assassin, I want to talk about his build for a second. He's actually going to be building into a Vanguard here. Why not? Why that, why that over maybe, like, a Vlad's? Well, I understand why he went for the Ring of Health. He needed some way to sustain in lane against the constant harass of the Weaver. He had the Warlock there, but, you know, Warlock, you know, you don't have infinite mana. You need some sustain yourself. Uh, to, to some extent, you know, the... Oh, we have an engagement. Yeah, they're, they're actually trying to kill this Rubik, but the False Promise comes out, and now Clockwork's going to end up dying because that Bat Rider... <laughs> Excuse me, at least we'll be able to port out Gus. No, not going to connect and on cooldown right there. So, But the False Promise ends up saving Rubik. And again, the turn kill on a clockwork as well. But yeah, back to PA. Yeah, so he has to get the Ring of Health. He has the Stout Shield anyways. Um, he also wants to not get bursted in fights. And it's only a, about a 1,000 more gold for that survivability. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of value from Blightstone uh, in terms of damage already. Shit, might as well go for it, right? <laughs> Fair enough there, but... Yeah, it's one of those, uh, maybe not the most ideal, but... Hey, he has a full-on Vanguard now, and again, the eventual Abyssal Blade. There's also there. no single item that turns around the game for him. Yeah. He just, he needs to not die. needs to have, you know, you, he prays to R and Jesus that he can survive in fights <laughs> and then get crits off. Yeah. Again, the, the only, the, the other option there, I feel like, was the Vlads, but... It would be nice armor to have against this Radiant side, and but he's the only melee hero that really matters with that, to be fair, as far as lifesteal aura, so... I, I'm personally... Well, well for Vlad's, everybody gets the lifesteal aura, uh, regardless of whether you're uh, melee or not. Is that, a, has yeah. that always been the case? Yes. Uh, well, not not always, okay. but uh, for quite a while now. Really? Okay, because that's, that's definitely... That's one of those I guess I never translated over, unfortunately. Anyways, Mason bottom lane. He gusts away. They were going on him with the lasso, but now the support's here. They're going to fight into this trap, unfortunately. Mason may end up going down. Stormspear wants to get the kill. Clockwork now joins the party with the hook shot. They finally get the raid boss killed. And they also got Orko from before, but they're going to lose at least three, probably a fourth in Clockwork to top it all off. Abed barely stays alive himself, to be fair, but he ends up with a Ooh, double Bubba kill. Stole the zip. Done. Did he? Oh, that, that helps. That's so value. Ball lightning there. And there you go, the big turn at the bottom lane again, trying to make some plays with the lasso, it's understandable, but ends up backfiring of sorts. And they lose four in the process. So, well, even more to that point then, going back <laughs> as that big fight breaks out. So I guess that, that you could argue then Vlad does have even more value then as a possibility. So, I, again, I'm not trying to sit here and suggest that, like, oh, Vlad's is going to be the biggest difference maker in this game. But Well, I also don't really like that much Vlad's too much on PA, uh, just because it delays... It delays your your damage items a lot. Yes, it it has it gives you some damage, but the problem is is that um, 
a lot of times you want to go in there and, and hit things and like uh, you you want to go in there and just start being that threat mm -hmm. when you have a Vlad's you're actually not that much of a threat and the lifesteal if you're not getting hit in the first place it doesn't help you sustain that much yeah. if you're not doing damage you're not life stealing very much yeah I'm gonna run on a Mason or not uh, actually forever playing the Weaver this game but uh, he uses a time lapse unfortunately for him five heroes are here and they still run him down actually so yeah it's a five-man game for wheel but of course a prime target in Weaver that they get picked off right there however their top lane is starting to be pushed in now as Speaking of Mason on the Drow Ranger, he's got the four staff finished. A BKB is no, that's gonna be Hurricane Pike is gonna be finished. Oh, the Dragon Lance, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, he's gonna finish a full on Hurricane Pike here shortly. As well, Clockwork though setting up. Hookshot is ready to go. Oracle is nearby though. False Promise is online and ready. Dagger goes in, doesn't really get the coup de grace proc from it. And here comes a counter coffering. They also chance for Wheel to benefit off of this Oracle. Puts the false promise onto his teammate and actually just tries to survive himself by running. That's not going to work. Mason does get up, the, get out though on the drow. And now Bobo's on the run with that ball lightning that he stole earlier. Aben, meanwhile, pick, getting a couple of pickoffs. Rev actually finishes off Derp Derp on that Warlock. And they're trying to chase, but these are tough targets to chase as we stretch from the beginning of this game. Not the greatest lockdown for them. And clearly shows off in the end of that last fight. So. I mean, it wasn't the worst exchange this time around, but it was only a two-for-one. It was pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they used Rock. They lost both their supports. All they really got at the end of the day was Dubu. And Dubu uh, is traditionally going to be really poor on DC, even when they're winning. Playing that Oracle right here. And again, he got his abilities off, really, and that's what, that's what matters. For, in that case, saving the Drow. Make sure she got out and... Now they're going to translate into a Roshan kill. Yeah, oh, Rock's down. They ain't scared. Mason picks it up. Yeah, he just that is, and that Hurricane Pike should be finished oh, here Dota very the shortly. Oh, the 2 is in trouble. Come on, boy. He, he has, he has coil here. soon. Oh, the Firefly stopped. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he runs right into the tree. Like, he's smacked into a brick wall there. Ends up getting killed as a result, so, yeah. Didn't even have to use the coil at that point. Okay, look at Abed. He actually went the... Uh, the veil into the blink into bots here. He is just very mobile now. Oh yeah, this is this is perfectly fine. Um, he actually, interestingly enough, skipped the skipped the first talent. Oh yeah, wow. He's level fourteen here. He's level fifteen. He's gotta get a talent here, right? Uh, oh. yeah. I mean, he probably will, but I okay. think he he probably felt like the points in his abilities were more value than yeah. you know another eight intelligence. He's already up so ahead so much like eight more intels. <laughs> Who knows? Did, didn't need to be that much smarter, apparently, at that point. But, yeah, now, now he's got it anyways. And 15, he'll probably put, uh, you know, let's do 50 damage as his next talent there. So, yeah, that much more kill potential going to yeah, be coming out. Definitely going for the 50 damage. Yeah. Especially with how aggressive he is this game. So, playing a very good puck, as you would expect. On the other side, Storm Spirit, he's actually almost got his, uh, his Bloodstone finished. He did go Power Treads first, so can't break that up. Yeah, it's uh, you see it more commonly now. Storm's going for the power treads just because like your your kill potential is just a lot better with the treads. Um, and even like by the time you by the time you get that bloodstone, you still feel like you need treads to to have some impact in the game, anyways. Yeah. At least if you get the treads early, maybe you can do a little more rather than have the mana boots. Yeah. It's so obviously going to help that much more for survivability. So the item also got buffed. You get like two more of strength, intel, or agility. He's sitting here at the bottom lane. I know. Okay, he's just sitting for the energy booster actually, but he just got enough gold for. Her. So he has a full soul booster. He needs the pattern of 900 gold. Then he'll have that bloodstone online, and that's going to be so key here for Wheel because it's one of those as usual for a bloodstone. But I think more importantly in this game because of how it's looking. He needs to get kills with that, start adding up those charges. If he dies right away, you know, dies, goes down to eight, it, it's just going to start falling out from there. So yeah, yeah, that's going to be very key. This is also a slow bloodstone. Uh, Ideally, too. you'd like it around, like, maybe 15 minutes, 14, 15 minutes. Clockwork. Blade mail is being worked on by him. Still a ways to go, but still a nine, so not too shabby here. Batrider with the drums first. We've been seeing a lot of that. Being picked up first, and the blink's coming up next, but 
And why do you think we've been seeing so much just drums first on Batriders? Uh, it buffs up your team, makes you tankier. Like, you don't want to just blink in there and die. Um, it's just like it's like a team-oriented item. Yeah. Shadow Blade, Drow Ranger, being worked on at least. We mentioned Silver Edge possibility. Oh, that could be good this game. Yep, yeah, necessary awesome. for the PA. Uh, he has the he has the Hurricane Pike already. PA yeah, just gonna throw out those daggers from a distance. Death Slitter finished. Mentioned that. So there's a Coup de Gras. If that helps, uh, if that kicks in here, could be some uh, big damage coming out. Yeah, unfortunately, he's he's gonna need a lot of those because they're very far behind right now and. At the moment, he is like the majority of their damage, those crits. Oh, jumps in. Oh, my God. Well, didn't even get any crits right there, but not necessary. You know, lift on a Bat Rider. The Dream Call locking him in place. Chaotic Offering hits four heroes. Oracle, the only one not hit, though. So False Promise still ready to use. Chase on a Rubik in the back lines. There's a the False Promise apply to Drell. And Drell's like, I'm out of here. He's going for the TP. It's going to be stopped, though. He has to fight this. He's not fighting this whole time. And he is going to die after the False Promise, so... They just full on try to retreat right here, and that's going to bite them in the ass, it feels like. Oracle also goes down. No buybacks on either. Abed, if he stays alive, you know, it's it's, it's all, all good, really, and he is. But that seems like an odd decision to just – Mason just was full on retreat mode, even despite the false promise. Yeah, they, they it looks like they need a little more to be able to save him because, like, false promise is just not enough at that point if KVH gets some good crits off. Like, there's – not a, like after the if a, if a drought dies and they use all their spells like there's not a lot of follow up for DC their only t sort of team fight is the puck yeah that's it and it's hard to punish on the it's hard to f punish a wheel on the high ground they did get the tower though that's true they got tier three so they got that objective at least but I think it also really goes back to the great point you made in the end of the draft right there is that they don't have that that strength presence they don't have that tanky hero that can at least lead the way and uh, allow them to then feel comfortable sitting out. Because right now, yeah, it's really the draw kind of has to just sit from a distance poking at the tower and hope that they don't get jumped. And you also look at Storm Spirit got the Bloodstone before that. He's at 14 charges now. So we mentioned how that was going to be a key right now to the shifting momentum in this game, and they capitalized. So it's definitely not over. 8,000 gold lead or net worth lead for DC is nice, but Wheel definitely has chance. Yeah, they're... They have decent uh, high ground defense potential, but you know, Warlock Alt is down now. True. For how long? It's one more minute here. So they're just gonna they're gonna take the free shrine. Uh, the other big thing is that Four F really needs some more items right now because if they're high ground pushing, this Weaver doesn't really do anything. Throws out some bugs. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't feel safe to hit the tower himself because. You know, he doesn't have that. He didn't have that Aegis. He also does, like, no damage. This almost feels like a an Axe kind of game for a Weaver. Like, he, again, he's kind of that, that. He's the offlane Weaver, obviously. Could you see that, or would you rather just see him build more damage as you're getting No, him? I like the Axe. Okay. Uh, maybe get a damage item and then go Axe. I mean, he, he does do some damage because he has Drought Aura. Finally more now because he has yeah. that Defusal. But it does seem like that they need more of that utility because right now with him, Drow, and Puck, they're all – I guess Puck kind of brings that a little bit, but she, he's looking for kills himself. He's not looking to, you know, save teammates or help anyone out necessarily. Yeah, he is not going to be saving anybody. No. Can't use your teammates. Darn. That would be so broken if you could. I know a game that allowed that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was one of the key differences that people would always talk about. Good old – Yields allowing that. Yeah, Haunt had its charms. <laughs> yes, it did. I miss SmackDown kills. That's one thing I really do miss. I'm not gonna lie. Good old taunts. I, you know, I, to to some extent, I do miss the Daggius, uh G G G G G spam. <laughs> the G's the raining from the skies, or yeah, just spam in general. Yeah. Yep, it had its uh, definitely had its good things. Anyway, well, this is this is annoying for Annihilate. Bottom lane down there. He's able to get out, but right on the cliff. Just running out of mana. Yeah, you're a you're a mid storm spirit, and you're getting bullied by an offlane weaver. Yeah. Not the best feeling in the world, but again, he has 14 charges on the bloodstone, so positive there, and they're looking for a big jump. Drow would be a nice target. Oracle is nearby. A shot, unfortunately, misses right there. Dagger's gonna go off. Will not necessarily connect, but he phantom strikes in. 
They also catch the Oracle, Face Edict up, as, uh, making them immune to quite a bit of damage, though. Storm Spirit also in the back lines does catch the Drow, but the False Promise applied to him and allowing him to escape. Oracle goes down, as does Warlock, so either side losing their main support. No Chaotic Offering coming out, of course. Get in there, Weaver. Yeah, well, Ovid wants to go in. He gets the kill on the clock working out. Hey, Nyla is in a lot of trouble, Weaver. Speaking of him, he runs right into the wall. He's got a Bloodstone Deny. He's got no mana. Yeah, he will deny right there. That would have been key if he did not, but... Phantom Assassin, oh, he goes down the triple kill for Abed to finish the job. This now, that's is finish. the woes of playing a Storm Spirit from behind. You spend all your mana to go on one target, you don't kill him, and then you're just a Storm Spirit sitting there with no mana. And it's just like a big sign on your head saying, kill me, I'm worth a lot of gold. Yeah. Yep, he, uh... Unfortunately, had a tough time in that fight, as most did, and Abed finishes with the hat trick, and now he actually has a Lincolns. Is going to be coming out, and oh, by the way, he's level 20. You know, no big deal. 10% spell amp as a result. Holy crap. He's like, he's so far ahead right now. Yeah. Uh, Storm's level 17, the closest in the game overall, yeah. So he's got that three level advantage plus. You know, even when Storm gets this Orchid, there's there's not too much he can do with it. He has to go on the Oracle every yep. single time. It's the only hero that he can kill uh, in a team fight, or else whoever else he gets an Oracle or goes on is just going to get False Promised, healed, um, and that's about it. I don't know if, speaking of that uh, Oracle right there, I don't know if that that was him being preemptive, but he had Fate's Edict on him when he got lassoed up and pulled back, and that actually kept him alive a bit longer, because obviously he was immune to all that magic damage, especially from the, the fire of the Firefly. So if that was especially, you know, very well played by Duba right there, and you know, that is going to be a nice tool to have against all this magic presence. Yeah, how the fights need to go for, for Wheel is the Storm needs to jump and Orchid the the Oracle, and then Bat needs to lasso uh, probably the Dro. Okay. So try to coordinate that in the fights and give yourself the best chance, but you do. We I mean, it. I, yep. ideally you would like to lasso like the, the Puck or something, and then... Good luck. Yeah. And then uh, KVH go, like, just starts hitting the Dro. Yeah, Puck now, as we mentioned, though, with that Lincoln. So does he even have a removal himself? Yeah, he doesn't have, like, a four staff yet, so couldn't even take that off at this point. Unless he gets help from somebody else. Um, what was I going to say, though? Oh, yeah, Ag's coming out for Weaver. So, sure enough, he is going to go that direction. Nice uh, saving tool there. Yeah, yeah, allows that's cheese. Allows, allows Mason to high ground safely. Draw Ranger. Sure enough, poking in, as we talk about, that don't really have that beefy presence in the front lines, but with the Aegis, feeling pretty comfortable. Silver Edge has been finished as well, so now has that break for the uh, Phantom Assassin specifically. Take away that missed chance. Probably just going to poke in right here. I, I would just, yeah, poke in, finish the tower. Why not? Ain't really that worried. Gus, actually, there we go. So healed on up a little bit, but that's another tier three dead. They did get the range racks you really remember, actually. Clockwork initiation will catch Puck, and that's a big kill coming out. He does have buyback, but without Puck pushing here, I don't know if you want to stay around if you're DC. Abed by himself. I oh, can't even lasso the, the Puck anymore. He's got all Lincolns, but regardless, he still dies. <laughs> How? Was that the Orchid? Did that catch him? Might have been a dagger to break the Lincolns. Yeah. Uh, and KVH does have a uh, Abyssal Blade now. Oh, wow. That's not bad. <laughs> that with the Death Slater, he actually is really becoming a massive threat now. Yeah, unfortunately, Mason just picked up that at Talisman of Evasion, so he's going to need an MKB on top of that. And he's not even going for that right now. He's going for the AC, which makes sense. I mean, a lot of physical presence here, of course. Yeah, I mean, he also hasn't seen the Talisman yet. Uh, once he sees that, he might switch it up. True. Is it that much priority? I mean, that is only going to be the Drow, to be fair. Does it really make a point like he needs that MKB? Well, Drow is like a, a, a pretty high priority target because you, you have to burst him down quickly. It's because he provides so much damage to the rest of his team. 
Yeah. You know, five range heroes that that draw war is a big deal. Also, once the the draw dies and KVH can't get broken anymore by the sh by the uh, Silver Edge, it gives him a lot more uh, freedom to run around the team fight and do whatever he wants. What about a BKB for PA? I'm trying to think that like again, it's one of those that's good against the the uh, puck especially, but is that really going to stop damage necessarily? Uh. I think at this point, um, I, I wouldn't get it just because you just have to... you At some point, you have to rely on your team to be able to control the other members of DC, right? Mm -hmm. You actually have a fair amount of disable. Like, every single person on his team has some some team fight control. So you just have to hope that you get the better jump because your purpose in this game is to deal a whole bunch of damage. Yeah, get the coup de grace procs, get the, somebody two-shotted and go from there, so. Uh, Rod of Atos, picked up by Batrider, actually, so picking up a little bit more crowd control, especially against the likes of uh, Puck. like that Puck, yeah. Oh, there we go, Hurricane Pike away from Drow, and Storm Spirit goes right after Rubik in the back lands. False Promise gonna be baited out on him, at least Dream Cole, meanwhile, locking down PA. Back here, Abyssal Blade stun Puck. Actually, that's just a bash rock, it looks like. Chaotic offering the up in the midst of everyone, though. Draw goes down. Aegis gonna bring him right back up. The Oracle heals on up. Everyone gonna be still alive for DC. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit and Warlock are dead. Warlock, though, again, he did his job. But with Storm Spirit dead, he has a buyback. They may try to finish off the May the Racks now. And Draw's going right back in. He still has that cheese. In fact, no break. Oh, there's the break effect, I believe. You see the damage coming out onto the PA. In comes Storm Spirit, though, with the buyback. The Vortex on in Mason. Glimmer Cape has seemed like also surviving with that. Storm Spirit, that's a dieback. Down goes Batrider. And that could all but do it here. PA just simply could not stick it up <coughs> to his target. Space Unit could have disarmed him, actually. Yeah, and they will finish the job. This unfortunate initiation for Wheel. Like I said, the he has to jump the Oracle. I, I think he expected that the Batrider was going to jump the Oracle and he could go on the the Rubik. Yeah. But it just it, it wasn't fast enough. It wasn't synced up. The coordination wasn't there. The first and so the moment that uh, Rubik got jumped, Oracle immediately false promises him. Doesn't yeah. die. And then at that point, like as a Storm Spirit, you've used all your mana like, to what? not kill a hero. What do you do? And you're uh, the two. You're you're, you're mid. That's like a big deal, and at that point you're just worthless and you die. I thought he might have been trying to bait out the false promise in that sense and like then go for somebody else, but you're right. If he just uses all his mana to do that, you know, what's the purpose in the end? Yeah, I think like happen. as a as a storm, like your mana is it's That's your damage. Yeah, it's it that's your ultimate. It's yeah. like you, wasting all your mana is like wasting your ultimate. Yeah. Well, Charlie, so we've casted two games. In the meantime, uh, NP and Planet Odd are still going. Holy shit, this game is still going <laughs> they, on. They started on our first game there. There's, what, 78 minutes in, it looks like. That is absurd. You know, that's just classic Eternal Envy games. Yeah. Oh, no buybacks on a lot of heroes, though. That's understandable. So, yeah, head on. Check out that one if you haven't yet, guys. Uh, that's on the mainstream there. We'll, we're going to actually wrap up here and watch it ourselves. And hopefully by the time we start our next one here, uh, that will actually be finished. But if things are still on schedule... Uh, our next one is, well, let's just say it's going to be for Pride. Uh, we're going to be casting Starboys versus Overpower, uh, the Champions team versus one of the open qualifier teams. Neither one can actually qualify, unfortunately, with their records, 1-6 and 0-7. and oh and seven. I'll have some fun with it, though. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, for sure. NP Planet Odd, though. We're going to check out that one. Sit tight, guys, however. Stay tuned. Myself, oh, this game still Ricky going? CPK, joined by Charlie here. 